Hey there, all you happy saps. It's your Scully boy here with some STL. Who's ready to hunt for some scummy lip ducks? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's just pretend you never gouged your eyes out while seeing that. Okay? Good. Hi there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Spot the Liberal. I am Kevin Esmol Anderson. How are you? All right, we got some good headlines for you today. Okay, first up up for bids on the STL train. Official federal investigators look at whatever or whether or not train engineer was distracted. You want to know what I think of it? Well, it's quite simple. Yes, he was distracted. No question about it. And you can take that to the bank and cash it outside. Cash me outside? How about that, huh? Nobody wants to cash you outside, girl. Nobody. Oh, and about that, let me just, let me point out. What happened as it pertains to this particular train accident that occurred just about a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, maybe five days ago. I forget how long it's been because it's December 20th as of today of this recording, but I can say without any doubt in my mind that the train engineer was probably distracted in some form or fashion. And I know this because it's probably true. It's more than likely that it's true, wouldn't you think? Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. No question. <laughs> and it's kind of, it kind of figures, doesn't it? You know, it kind of really makes you think, you know? It really makes you think about things like that. Because it all makes you wonder. And it all turns around. And you know what? I don't even care! I don't even care! Alright! Let's bring this discussion straight to the table. Alright, you guys, go ahead and discuss this among yourselves. Okay, can somebody please explain to me what's going on here? And why do all these things happen at once every day? Yeah, you have a good point there, don't you? Yeah, I do. There's just no question about it, I mean. I've been on the shirt longer than most people, and, and, and I know things because I see things, and seeing is believing, and believing is accepting, and accepting is knowing, and so on and so on and so forth. You get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Hey, what about that time when that train collided with an 18-wheeler? Or that time someone stepped in front of a train in their own lives and then the train ran them over. I mean, don't you just see that in news articles anymore? I mean, seriously. Yeah, he's, she's got a good point, you know? Why not call my sister a he? It was an honest mistake. Don't worry about it. All right. Oi, oi, got a question here. Um, what's been going on nicely here? Um, what's the stuff going on? I really don't care about it. I'm, I'm just being honest. Because me personally, I really look at this stuff every day and I don't really find it all that interesting and surprising in my mind. Because you know, uh, it's just, it happens every day. You know, because, because, because honestly though, you know, it happens every day, man. Because, because you just never know what's going to happen down the road. If you know what I mean. Yeah, man, we know what you mean. Seriously, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's not working. Oh, shut up, man. You don't make any sense anyway. All right, fine by me. I mean, if, if that's how you want to say it, then let's just say it like that and be done with it. Right? Right, right, right. Right. Okay, let's go on to the next topic. I say, boy. Hey, I say, man. You got oh, my right. God. You know, folks, right about now, I wish I could figure out just what in the f*** is going on. and they passed it and stuff and 
forced by the Senate to revote on it today on Wednesday in store. And they finally managed to pass the law despite no Democrats whatsoever supporting it. <laughs> None of this stuff makes sense anymore. Oh, I'm telling you, nothing ever truly makes sense anymore. It's just Democrats are the dumbest people in the entire freaking world. They're, they don't have a lick of common sense about them. They don't care about what other people think. You know, this, that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're a bunch of Democrats and we don't care. Suggestion. Why don't we vote Hillary Clinton in and let that serve as Bill Clinton and Barack Obama's third term? No! Like me. Yeah, 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 me. Yeah,
Dave Dross, the sodium acid pyrophosphate. While many others, of course, are used in antioxidants, body wash, lubricants, and sprays, silicone, cement, asbestos, and insulation, and are pre cooked in beef tallow. But that's not even a half of it. Tomato sauce, ironically, also contain fry eggs and maggots, and hair boilers containing demoisturizers, which allow them to stay fresh despite being made decades ago. Airplane meals, strangely, contain inedibilities such as partially cooked meat, which is freezed and cooked 10 hours prior to serving, rendering all of it flavorless, unnecessarily overseasoned, malnutritious, poisonous, unsanitary, diseased, and distasteful. So next time you buy something delicious, buy it from a farm or a local source. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are the facts of life you need to know about food in order to not die from food poisoning. Hey, Sven, what's the weather like over there in Norway, then, man? Freezing! I couldn't hear you. What? Freezing! I'm sticking here. What was that? Freezing! Well, now, man, I see. That's more reasonable. I know what it's like in Norway now, like the moon that's always rising. Hello, people. It's been a long second season of Spot Delivery. Let me tell you, I don't regret it a single bit. Let me tell you right now, because you people aren't going to get this anywhere else. By the way, I'm going to give you a bonus spoiler for an upcoming episode of Reaching Out for the Unfamous. It involves one of my friends who I've known online through Sky the Beating Art for quite a bit of time now. His name is Bhaskar Chatterjee, and he hails from India. I think he's from Mumbai or something, I'm not sure. But let's just say that he lives in a country that's run by abolitionists. And by that I mean elite enemies. And when you're in a nation that's consisting of nearly one and a half billion people, you can only help but wonder how much you have to go through in life to be able to realize that Maybe there's some hope for you somewhere else, just not here. I mean, I don't know. But this guy makes incredible breathing art that would otherwise be considered pretty remarkable. And he has some pretty wise advice to share with us. He says that death is never the answer, that it's not good. He says that still, everyone will die and that we have anyone who misses it. He quotes that all meaning of happiness is in living in content and strong life. And to be strong, and to claim strong good, one has to fight and win the battle of dominance. Perhaps those strong people have nothing to be told, they in way went through it all and are destined for that. Those who are destined to be weak suffer and their destiny is suffering. Which it's it's kind of it's kind of realistic. It's really realistic. And I can understand his reasoning behind that. I mean I really can. I can absolutely understand his reasoning behind that, you know? And then and then this this one of his latest submissions from like, I don't know, I think it was a year ago. He says that and he's just speaking truth as far as I know. He says that India was and is a part of Eurasia, a part of the same com a part of the same continent when Europe and Russia are. The aboriginals rode up to there from South Oceanic invasions and are always growing north and gaining Caucasian females and advancing up and destroying lives with every advance that they gain. He says that it began on an invitation, not just 60 years ago, but centuries ago, when it infuriated a Caucasian woman with a madness word phrase, a little nonsense, and the Caucasian woman chased it to solve the riddle and showed it tit for tat, and it kept running over the riddle and nabbed her in a quarter and overpowered her and touched her defeated, and she was seduced to defeat. So basically, this guy lives in a country where it's legal to kill people. Perfectly legal. And that country is, is far worse over there than in America. Or at least when it was back in the day. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking nonsense, and then again, maybe not, but I will say this. Bhaskar Chatterjee is indeed a very, very talented, very unique, open-minded, outspoken man. He has a great personality about him that shines through his art and his three-dimensional renders, and I encourage all of you to check his work out sometime. And with that, I conclude this episode of Spot the Liberal and this season of Spot the Liberal. Thank you all for watching, and good night.